does flip back to the city of Valdosta now. Matt, our, uh, Matt, do you want to do four and five simultaneously, or do you want to separate them? I have some thoughts on that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, four and five I would like to do separately this time. Yes, sir. Because they involve different properties. Okay. Four is one piece of property. Five is that property plus some additions. So because the geography is a little bit different, I think it would be cleaner here to conduct those hearings and motions separately. But later on the agenda, we have a similar pair of requests that are identical properties. Those, I think, we could come up. So if you will then please present uh, case number BH 2017-10, Rose LLC. Yes, sir. This is a rezoning request for 1.57 acres to rezone from R15 to R10. Subject property is located at 318 Eagle Road. This is along the north side of the road, about halfway between Judea Place and Northfield Road. It is across the street from the Quail Rise subdivision, which is that pinkish color uh, around Longwood Circle that you see there on the zoning map on the screen. Um, some of you may recall about four years ago, we had a zoning case for the property to the east 316 Eber Road, and that was approved as R10 zoning, and that's depicted there on your map. This is the same applicant um, who is wanting to add some additional property and redevelop both of them, which goes into the next agenda item. But for this one, we're looking at just the rezoning of R15 to R10. Um, subject property has two duplexes on there, even though it's in R15. They are very non-conforming. Um, they have been there since the 70s. Uh, perhaps longer, but it's hard to tell the history of those buildings. Um, I'm not sure if there was variances or something granted our records, particularly before 1984, are <coughs> clear. Uh, but they have been there for a while. I think most of them have changed. Several of these properties along the north side of Eagle Road were in unincorporated Miles County. And they were annexed into the city 10 years ago. And when we annex uses of land, we annex them as is. So that's how it came into the city. The R15 zoning in the county was given R15 zoning in the city, and when the hot use is grandfathered in. So there's four dwelling units that are there. What's interesting to notice from Eagle Road, it looks like there's one building. I don't see the others that are there. Um, very similar discussion as to what we had a few years ago on the other R10 property. This is just additional acreage, a different master plan, which I put a copy of that there in your packet. Matt, before you get too far, you're asking for R15 on this piece of property and R10 is the next little piece of property? Correct. Okay. In other words, the request is to have both of these R10. Currently okay. one is so already R10. R10 on the next case. This is a rezoning from R15 to R10. Oh, okay. And the next case is a planned development for both okay. properties to go. On the paperwork, you're saying to, uh, to, uh, residential R15 instead of R10 on the first page of the Looking at cover page, agenda item number four. Yes, sir. To rezone from R15 to R10. Okay. Okay. Character area wise, this is established residential character area. Which, uh, this allows the possibility of any of the residential zones, uh, regardless of the density, uh, but it precludes the possibility of officer commercial zoning. Um, on the character area map, you see the brighter colors to the east. That is along North Oak Street, you have Neighborhood mm -hmm. Activity Center, and Community Activity Center. Uh, where you see the label for Neighborhood Activity Center as a point of reference, that's Langdale Place. So this is sort of along that middle part of the Eagle Road. Aerial, you see the rooftops um, of the houses that are in the area. Most of this is built out. Along the north side of the Eagle Road, it is typically larger tracts of land. Um, have been developed many years, but over the decades, the properties have been redeveloped, generally to a higher density. You um, see the smaller lots and the more plentiful rooftops on the south side, <coughs> and that's reflected in the zoning pattern of the area. Um, along, if you look on the bottom of this map, to the left is Willowwood Circle, and it's probably already zoned R10, and then Fawnwood is PRD10, that's an old zone classification, which is a, a more dense version of R10. Um, so the zoning for that area is actually slightly more dense than what that one is for us. The north side is dominated mainly by R15 zone, with a few pockets like the R10 to the east, and then there's one RP parcel on today in place, and that hails back to when this property was in Miles County. Um, 
many lots uh, of issues involved here. Many of them are repeat from four years ago. Uh, there's a survey of the property. Here's the master plan of what they're ultimately proposing. There'll be a lot more discussion on that with the next agenda item. The two subject properties, uh, which look like large home sites from Eagle Road. And then across the street, this is the side view of the Bell Rise subdivision. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the zoning change from R15 to R10 after finding it consistent with the conference plan and our standards for exercise of zoning power. And our comments to those standards are there in your packet. I'm glad to answer any questions you might have on the proposed presentation. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, any questions for staff at this time? There be none. At this time, I will call for anyone wishing to speak in favor of the zoning request only. This is for the zoning request. Good afternoon. <coughs> Thanks, I'm Carl Lemon with Fuente Road, and I am a member of Pembroke LLC on the estate of Jim Sider. That estate is being represented by some of the outside of Jim Sider. Matt gave the, the um, zoning change report to the Board of Review last week. I believe it was the 25th. Um, I know that the Board of Review is going to be meeting with the Board of Review this week to talk about the zoning change. Um, I'm going to ask Matt to talk about the zoning change and what he's going to do about it. Thank you. Like a neighborhood that will be similar to Huntington Ridge, Thornbrook, uh, um, Meadow, and Georgetown. And it's basically a neighborhood that would support people who wish to downsize. Um, <coughs> later on in age in their life, they want to downsize or for young professionals. Um, it's not just a market for, for downsizing, it's, uh, it's a market we're already getting calls for, for young professionals going to move to the area that have heard about it. And so, um, with that in mind, we've developed a concept that will be managed by homeowners association and maintain most of the uh, landscaping on site. The whole property will be maintained by one organization so it's, it's under control. Um, we think that really help property values <coughs> in the neighborhood. I mean, in this development itself, but also in the neighborhood. Um, we think it will be a good addition to Valdosta and to this area, which is um, good stance in the development there. Uh, the two properties in question are run down. Wood, and that's probably what you'll hear from the neighbors uh, who I have met with. I met with uh, Mr. Rowe today. He lives in Jason. We had a very great, good conversation with Ian Gilman, and uh, we're also in discussion about some uh, some possible considerations that we can then make it more appealing to them. I'm sure you'll hear from them all the way. But anyway, that's, uh, that's basically what we're trying to accomplish. Any questions for presenter? Being none, uh, let me stress this, is anyone here wishing to speak against this rezoning request come forward? This is the rezoning request. Come forward this time. Take your name and your address. Four four two three seventeen 317 Crest Drive. A petition here signed by 75 people in two days that came by my house on my business to just to deny this. The property takes up 100% of the back of my yard. takes up 60% of the side of my yard. The number one reason I'm here is due to the water runoff. There's quite a few people behind me here that have property adjacent to it, next to it, and my next door neighbor. I stood in my backyard for 10 years ago. There's a natural flood plain out there. Like anyone says it runs from the edge of Baby Joe Drive, Hartsfield, Goldfield Drive, Crestview Drive, and it runs directly between where you see R15 and R10. Right at, the, right at the property line, right next to my stood in the 10th foot. So I'm going to read the notes over it. The number one reason is runoff water that runs from what I just said. The water has. Also, the, there's going to be. They're going to have to raise this property up. When you build on a heater and you're going to free lane this, I don't see how you're going to run the water off in any other direction. Um, when I moved to this area, it was R15, and I knew it was R15, and I lived in an R10 area. And the noise is just unbelievable. When you've got a neighbor, which is proposed 10 feet 
from our property line to house within 10 feet of our property line. There's no guarantee that when the people move out, who they're going to sell this house to. You can't go to who buys a house, who will not buy a house. You can't go to someone that can't sell their house. If you have a loved one that's lived there that's retired, it's a great concept. But if they have no one to leave it to, or if they live in someone in the family who is not in our area, they have no investment to live at all. So I hope everyone will consider this because there's a lot of people behind me who live in the subdivision who enjoy having a little bit of acreage and not having someone a stone throw away where they can hear the next family arguing or all the things that come from the long I moved away from that thinking I was in a safe area. I know these guys have a lot of investments in this. It seems really good on paper, but once it's sold, they have no control. None. Due to the widening of the Eagle Road in Jerry Jones, do you know how much more traffic that's going to put on the road? And they're going to build 18 more homes, which are multifamily, which could equal 36 or even more, coming in and out of that subdivision. I hope you guys will consider this. Nobody wants me to say this. I would like to turn this in, if I may, to whoever. But you talk about the value of land and homes. I bought my house for $67,000. These guys want, do you know how much you're going to ask for your homes? $100,000, whatever. The house on the corner of Northfield and Crestview sold yesterday for $42,500. How can you tell me that a 1,000 square foot home is going to bring more money than a 2,000 square foot home with an acreage of lot? You know? I just don't see how they can get them out of money other than being new construction. But there are other people here that might have more comments than I have that like turn these in. This was just 75 people who came to my house and my business. Commissioner, do you have any questions for me today? I do have one question. Please. Yeah, on the map, can you point out for me exactly where you live? I sure can. R15. Is it this one, one of these lots? That one to the right? This one. That's where you That's where I live. And if you'll point back to that, where the property is <coughs> to the right, which would be the east, yeah, come back to the left where the line divides. Over here? Yeah. There is a natural ditch that runs all the way up to Hartsfield. Everything from Betty Joe Drives, there's a culvert pipe that feeds into it. Every bit of that runs right down my line, and it goes on to where the R15 is now, but it feeds into the R10. Because I go back there, this is my third year living there. I go back every year, and I take a shovel, and I have to dig the dirt away so that the water can run off my property. There are several people here that would speak after me. Miss Jane lives next door to me. She's a new resident, just as I am. Stacks up in her backyard. Runs in Mr. Harold's yard. See, we still haven't fixed it for when we put the new sewage in and the new water system. Water does not run out of the ditch on Eager and Jerry John. It's stagnant. It stays right there. He's had to build several, several berms to divert the water from into his house. This dramatic that lives on the Dan Street. He had to put up a wooden fence to divert the water from running through his uh, downstairs room. There's not proper drainage in this area. I'm telling you guys, it's just not set up right. You tear down all the natural trees that goes there. There's your noise. The reason why I moved from West Park Avenue was because I could hear the traffic and noise from Bay Tree Road. Now that I live off the ear, I'm just thankful that I have a little bit of bushes and trees I have so I don't have to hear the thump in the car or the stereos and the traffic that comes in and out all the time. This is my little spot of paradise. I want to live on this road my whole adult life because there's no one that comes through. You either come to see me or you're lost. And I'll be glad to show you that. But I'll let the other people speak, but I hope you'll take this into consideration. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. I want to ask you a question. Um, since this is the rezoning section of it, and I know there may be on 
the next request might be some more. Should I just wait for those to come forward? Right. I mean, some of the issues the speaker brought up pertain to the plan development request, right. which That's is the next saying. agenda item, particularly the references to the other property. Um, I think this one can be a more brief discussion and deliberation and focus strictly on the density issues. So, so what I've asked, to the audience, what I've asked, Matt, is we, we are presently just focused on, focused on the rezoning portion of this one piece of property. The next case that we'll be we're talking about momentarily is the actual development case. So at this time, I'm not going to take anyone else from the audience, but I will when we start, start talking about the development side of it. So we are, we are strictly talking about the rezoning portion of it now, but we will continue momentarily with the development side of it. Unless there's someone out there who wants to speak. But unless you have somebody who wants to speak specifically toward the rezoning and not the development. Yes. If you, if you got something to say about the rezoning, come forward. Yeah. You want to do first? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Jim Harrell. I live at 320 Peter Road. I also own the property at 322 Peter Road. Uh, my idea from zoning is to keep similar properties in the same area. And all this property in front of our house, in front of Eagle Road, we went through, we tried to get it not rezoned as dense as it is, and we ran into a brick wall every time. To me, it seems like you're not really interested in preserving the neighborhoods and keeping the R50 in them. It's more like how much more revenue can you get from national property in them? You're going to have 20 houses in that. Two areas there, which will bring much more revenue to the city than those are leaving at R15. He can, he can build something there and you know, make it a nice home instead of putting a smaller cracker box house in there. But it should at least be kept at R15. Uh, I'm the one who would prefer to do putting firms up there trying to get property the water he can run through my house and yard. We get like an inch, inch and a half rain. Northfield Road doesn't have any ditching on it all. So Northfield Road becomes a river. You don't believe it come out there when it's raining something. It's 322 feet of road as a ditch. It's got water standing in it this deep all the time. The city engineer came out here and said that will have a positive flow. That's what he thought. I said, well, I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I don't know what a positive flow is. But I know water don't run uphill. They came out and tore up my driveway again. It's the after to put the sewage line there. I requested, because that property over 322 is still can't hold any water. Mosquitoes, frogs. We're joking about putting a fish in. You know, $5 a day to fish out there. <laughs> it's not funny to me, but that's, that's what we're they were talking about. Uh, they lowered my cover down, probably six inches. They said, that's going to give you a positive flood, water flood. It did not. Water still doesn't low up here. And I just request no changes to the R15 that's there now. Uh, I can't see why they can't do R15 and do some kind of development where you thought that property for previous but uh, the whole neighborhood is not wanting more dense houses in there. And all that pavement, we don't have more. Mr. Chairman, come forward. Stay with that one second, sir. Commissioners, any questions for the Thank you, sir, for your time. Uh, this, is, this is closed and took it now as far as this case of the Strickland on the rezoning side. Any comments or discussions? Thank you. Just glad. Um, this is from Mr. Marshall. So, at R15, currently this property can be redeveloped theoretically as four lots, right? If a street is put in to provide adequate frontage, correct. Um, with its current frontage on Eagle Road, it does not have enough to be set up. But theoretically, this can be, they can be flat. Property, but well, it would be, right, and as I described in the staff report, it would be one road that goes mm -hmm. about halfway back to a cul de sac. So, as far as the rezoning case, we are talking about R15, where there's possibility of potentially four lots that can be developed, or R10, six lots, basically. Um, if it's an R10, it's, right. what is R10? 10,000? R10 is 10,000, and then the issue there is not the land area. Amount of frontage that you would generate. So it would have the same issue with needing an internal Correct. road. But in theory, as far as the zoning is, we are looking at the plan development of combining the two laws. What we're looking at is R15, which this property, the size of it right now, may allow up to four laws at R15. If the applicant chooses not to rezone it, they can put well, actually, if you look at the third paragraph of the staff report, I double check my numbers. But as zoned at R15, if you put the street in, I'm estimating three lots, three lots. because of the frontage. Okay. And then if you rezone it to, four, to R10, it increases to four. Mm -hmm. That's a maybe four depends on the call site design. So, 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 so
So strictly speaking, we zone in that. We have other PD. What we are talking about is really the difference between one lot. Correct. One lot either with the street added or one lot by just straight up subdivision. Okay. Um, to put it in perspective, it's a fairly large lot. It has 167 feet of frontage on Eagle Road, and it's barely wide enough to split into two R10 lots left and right. Mm -hmm. But because the property is large, each lot would then be about 34,000 square feet, mm -hmm. and the minimum for R10 is 10,000. So it's three times the land area from what it could be otherwise. But they want to build 17 homes in there, not four. 17. Not as part of this result. Excuse me, I'm okay. sorry. So yeah, just for clarification. Just for this one lot, that's the difference of design. Mm -hmm. Correct. Any other questions for staff? Commissioners, any more discussion amongst ourselves? If not. Okay, VA 2017 dash 10, the rezoning request, I will take a motion this time. Move we find consistent with the zoning uh, conference plan and standards for exercise the zoning power recommend approval of the request to the city council. I have a motion from Commissioner Colson to approve. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, do I have a second? Let's see it. Second, Mr. Hall. All in favor of approval. And the second, please say comment, raise your right hand. All opposed? This one so passes for one minute. Let's call now. That's the rezoning section of it. We now move into 